A personal testimony. I am, I am dementia. I am standing here in front of you as the person, as a patient, Helga. But I'm standing here in front of you as an advocate, as a person working in the European Working Group, as a person influencing leaders on national, European and international level, as a person raising up the voice for all of us people with dementia. To be able to do this kind of work, you need to undergo a certain process. I call this a process of changing, a process of changing your life with dementia in a creative way. And believe me, I didn't think about seven years ago when I was diagnosed that one day I will be able and stand here and say to all the doctors and statistics, forget it. Dementia is as individual as the person themselves who get diagnosed. And it is also a matter of how you dealt with risk, with, let's say, very heartbreaking situations in your whole life. And when I got diagnosed, I believed from the very beginning in the sanctity of life. I didn't believe only what the doctor said. I believed in my own self. And the first step is this kind of belief and telling to yourself, you have all these incapacities which are coming with dementia. I can't speak my seven languages I had once. I can't work in the neurological field as I worked once. I can't be on the political floor as I was once. I don't have the family I had once. I have just my son who is an autist. But I have my strong belief and I have my new family. And these are my dementia friends. To raise up your voice means to believe again, to see a task in your life. And this task has to be given by society. So how can I or any one of us who gets diagnosed become an advocate, a champion, if we don't have your support? I found this support about seven years ago in a self-supporting group in Munich, Germany. That is my origin. There is a place where I belonged to many years ago. Today I belong to Europe. I started in this group and believe me, all people there, we are a group divided into people touched by dementia. I like this word touched. And another group with carers. And it doesn't matter in my group if you were the lawyer or if you were, let's say, a janitor. If you were a teacher or a housewife. In dementia, all people are equal. And the group gives you support. The group gives you trust. And if you speak up with the group, there is a credibility you have nowhere. No book, no doctor, no teacher can tell you what it means living daily, what it feels. 
people with dementia and myself, I notice very quick that more than the hardships, the challenges of my dementia are the challenges by society. And I had a wonderful support. Somebody helped me to write a book. And the book was called five years ago, Why I'm Fighting for the Rights of People with Onset Dementia. The book has a title, Stepping Out of the Shadow. Of course, we ourselves, touched by this disease, we have to say, it's not a shame. We speak up, we are as valuable as you. So it is an appeal to step out of the shadow. We can change society only by talking to you and even more by touching your hearts. Dementia is not only the medical, the pharmaceutical, the economical, and so on aspect. You know what dementia mainly is? <laughs> it is the aspect of communication in society. How do you feel to somebody else who is touched? How do you behave? How do you learn this new way of listening to people? Do you think it is necessary that we get dementia? People who are touched by dementia to learn this way of communicating with each other? I don't think so. But it is a challenge for our society. Living with dementia is life. It is life because I am not ashamed. If I'm asked to give an interview, I stand there in front of them. I stand there in this picture. Our young gentleman, hats off. I would like to talk to this microphone. <laughs> I stand there in front of them and say, I've got dementia, so what? Maybe you have got another disease. One day, dementia is going to be normality. This is a new challenge globally. You heard so many talks, abstracts. You were listening, and you know what it means. And you were given a figure, probably, every four seconds, somebody like me like someone else from my group, is going to be touched. And I think we, the European group, are the people who are trying and doing a pioneering work to change society. My advocacy, as I told you, is in the group. My advocacy is on national level. I think I spoke in these years about some hundred times to people, people in my neighborhood, volunteers, in schools, in so-called nursing homes, because I'm also speaking and listening and want you to listen. What would I like to be cared the way, the way you care for me when I'm old, when I'm in the final stage. And I give a voice to the people who can't talk anymore. And I say, ask us today, include us. What kind of forms of living would we like? What is necessary? Don't write all the books. Don't conceive all the wonderful buildings without including us. Considering what happened the last five years, I think we made a big step forward. We are not only named as participating, 
The best example is Alzheimer Europe. We are included from the very beginning. Who was also reading the abstracts you handed in? You hundreds of people. People with dementia too, they had a voice. Who was planning? People with dementia. Who is included in projects in Alzheimer Europe? People with dementia. Who evaluates? And I think this is a big applause for Alzheimer Europe and all the people of us who are working. Yes. Some months ago, people with dementia got stronger and stronger. We are now connected globally. We learned how to work online again. We have a so-called Dementia International Alliance. We are members on the board. We are, let's say, not only online with people like you, we are invited. We are invited to speak and politicians and big events, international events, listen to us. I give you just some examples. An event like G7 has to take place with participation and with the voice of a person with dementia. It's just a voice, but I'm sure this is pioneering work and in the next years, there will be some voices. An event like European health management in Amsterdam, of course, with our participation. And if a World Council of Dementia was founded, and there is no person with dementia included, my friends, you know, I spoke up at the G7 in London. It is not democratic. If you build up alliances, if you build up councils to rule people with dementia, rule in inverted commas, don't forget the persons themselves, don't forget the roots that are also the carers, because we know what we need. And we are the only ones who can tell you. I'm sure I'm always positive. I have a vision. One day, you contact people. One day, you include them everywhere. They are sitting in political organizations. They are having a voice on your national, local committee everywhere. These people have to be listened to. And I'm sure that today the world is watching us. And I would like to finish with one sentence. We must, all of you, you must embrace the idea of a change. This is a new face of dementia. People who are 40, 50, 60. And these people are even more a challenge for society. And these people know that one day there will be the end. But they would like living well with dementia today and invest the money, not only in research, but invest the money in our lives today. So embrace this idea and make a noise. Make a noise and tell in your own place where you are coming from, either from Italy, from Iceland, I don't know, from Australia. Uh, I don't tell Scotland because here's a voice and the noise is heard everywhere. <laughs> but do it and tell them to join this place of this European working group because in this way we get stronger and all of you become dementia friends. And I hope to see all of you again in Slovenia. Thank you so much.